Welcome to the Wildfire Tales podcast. I'm your host, Todd Gagney, co-founder of Wildfire Lab. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different uh, than we've done in the past. My co-founder, Mike Wevetter, hosted an entrepreneurial panel with uh, a number of our Wildfire Labs uh, candidates at something called Innovation Expo that happened here in Rapid City. Um, I think this is kind of a fun cross-section of the stories of five different entrepreneurs that are in our program and just kind of how they've progressed through it and what their experiences have been being an entrepreneur. So sit back and enjoy this episode of Wildfire Tales. Thanks everyone for coming. My name is Mike and I'm going to uh, talk to you a little bit about Wildfire Labs because I think it's being introduced this year to many of you. And then we're going to bring up some entrepreneurs and we're going to talk a little bit about the panel and a little bit about what it's like to be an entrepreneur. But before I tell you about Wildfire, I want to start with my journey of being an entrepreneur. And much like Matt, I started in my basement and I was in school at Dakota State and decided that I wanted to start my first business uh, fixing computers because it beats having a job as an intern where I got paid nine bucks an hour. And so that's where I started and through that designed my first product, which solved the problem, which was backups were terrible. Back in those days, everybody used tape backups and these things where you'd leave them on your dash and they would melt and then you'd lose your backups and they'd fail. So I commandeered a bunch of old servers from Gateway, put them in a rack and said, you're backed up to the cloud. And nobody knew what the cloud was and the cloud was my basement. And so that's how I got started as an entrepreneur. And I, once I got the bug, I just loved it so much. I loved it because I loved solving people's problems and I loved doing it for myself. And I love doing it in a way that made a difference in the world. So since that time, I have gone through and I counted it up and there's been six startups that I've been involved with uh, at varying degrees uh, day to day and have built companies that have done very well. And I also built some companies that didn't do as well as we'd hoped. Some of it was mistakes that we made. Sometimes it was the market change. And we had so many things that we learned along the way. And I, I started like Matt, I was in my basement. I was just figuring this out for myself. But as I went along, I started to meet people. And one of the people that I met is a guy named Todd Gagney. And Todd took me under his wing. And he was somebody who not only helped me from a foundational perspective of who, what it was to be an entrepreneur, but he knew tech and he knew software. And he knew what it was like to build a company that made software. And there's all of these frustrating, difficult nuances that are unique. And, and if you're all alone, you have to learn all of those lessons yourself. And that is a very hard way to build a business. And back to the coachability thing, if you are not coachable as an entrepreneur and you learn every lesson the hard way, you are going to be at it for a very long time. So what Todd and I decided to do is we said, hey, there's some patterns here. Can we take those patterns and can we create a process that is very uniquely tailored to software companies? And can we help a company bridge the chasm between a great idea with a solid founder and a company that has revenue? Because as we heard from the, on, the panel of investors, if you have an idea that has revenue, it is so much easier to raise money. It is so much easier to be credible and all these things. So this is the process that we effectively began to test in startups that I was running. And we began to figure out what are the things that are repeatable in this process. And as we figured out this, this process, we saw lots of entrepreneurs around us that had great ideas, but they weren't sure what to do next because there's this sea of things that you can go do. What should I do now that makes a difference? And that's where this idea behind Wildfire Labs came to be. So we are entrepreneurs helping entrepreneurs. We are people that have been through the fire. <laughs> that's kind of where some of the name comes from and have learned some lessons that we can pass on to investors who are building tech companies specifically. We also learned that it's not enough just to be in a community. You have to have some tools. So some of the things we're going to talk about today on the, on the entrepreneur panel are some of these tools. So we wanted clarity. What do I do next? So we have an app with tasks and tasks have help articles on how to go do them. So it becomes much clearer. How do I get to market? Then we added, we, we, you know, a lot of tech entrepreneurs are not necessarily coders. And so can we resource them with dev, a dev team that can help them to get their product done quickly rather than trying to find developers, build it. They eventually build their own dev teams, but this is a bridge. And then how do we teach them essential skills of how to be a CEO and how to be a founder? 
Uh, most entrepreneurs are really strong on the tech side, they're really strong on the product side, or they're really strong on the sales side. And, have, and once you get out of that category that they have a lot of experience in, there's a lot of learning that you have to go do. If you're not a finance person, you look at a P&L for the first time when you're in an angel group and they ask you what it is and you've never looked at one and how it works. You don't want to be in that position. So that's what Wildfire University is. And then we are working with the network and you heard from a bunch of them today of providing a little bit of a, of a de-risking mechanism of having all those things in place so that when they look at a deal, they sort of know what that quality score is. And that's what we're building with that, that access to capital team. And so we actually have an office now. This is Wildfire Labs HQ over there on Quincy. And this is a meeting we had earlier this week on, on, uh, on today. And it's just really great to be together. So we have a co-working space that entrepreneurs can build in. And uh, we have another place that uh, we've just uh, added, um, the Rushmore building. So it's great to partner with the Har Brothers on that to give them space as we grow. And we've expanded our team. So now we have uh, Eric Martz, raise your hand, Eric. Eric uh, has a background in finance and has done some tech investing amongst other things. And we have Eric Renager, who's over in the back. And Eric has uh, a great background in some of the training and things like that, that are, has been really helpful to our team. So it's been great to grow with that. So that's a little bit of background on Wildfire. And rather than us talking about that, we wanted to bring up, and we're gonna bring up the panel of entrepreneurs that are in our program. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what it's like to be an entrepreneur. So come on up guys, we're gonna sit on the stage and we're gonna talk a little bit about this. So I would be remiss as an entrepreneur uh, if I didn't give them a chance to pitch. So they're each gonna do their 30 to 90 second pitch uh, as an introduction to who they are. So uh, Kathy, since you're on the end, we'll start with you. I guess that's why you always need to be ready. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. Imagine your friend Lisa, an Airbnb super host with three cabins in the Black Hills, all fully booked. Guests just checked out, and new ones are set to check in at 5 p.m. same day. Now, around 11.42 a.m., Lisa's cleaner cancels. She's in panic mode. Lisa needs help today. But the earliest she can book traditional cleaners is Saturday. Today is Tuesday. You being Lisa's friend, you love her and all, but you don't want her to ask you to help clean, because that's not your thing. You would have your own laundry to fold. Hi, I'm Kathy Jordan from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I'm founder of Hire Cleaners, an app that's been developed and positioned as the Uber for house cleaning. For we are bringing the same convenience and efficiency of ride sharing to the world of house cleaning. We learned that Airbnb hosts, property management companies, and realtors all share the same problem of not having direct access to cleaners whenever help is needed in a hurry. Inside Hiya's platform, a property partner is directly connected with a pre-vetted and professional cleaner who's available to clean today if needed, eliminating last minute favors. While our app is being, well, it's not being right now, but it's going. So you have to speak it into existence. While our app is prepping for development, we are also preparing to beta test the market. So if you're interested, if you'd like to partner with us, please sign up and get on our list to be notified when Hire will be in your area. Visit www.hiacleaners.com. That's H-I-Y-A Cleaners. And meet Hire, your new way to clean. Thank you, Kathy. Good job. All right, Mycroft. All right, uh, I don't really have a lot of space here, so I'll just sit here. Um, hi, I'm Mycroft. Uh, I'm from Viva Landis. I'm from uh, Nanjing, China. I'm the only child I don't have sibling. I hope that's not going to be a problem for my uh, future <laughs> investors. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we are Viva Landis. Uh, we are actually trying to create a uh, uh, trading platform for those virtual in-game items. Uh, some of them are called like skins, whatever. And those skins are tradable. 
and uh, the trading volume of uh, the skins is actually huge. According to our analysis, it's around like in just like one official mar mar market, it's around like uh, three million US dollar per day, which is a lot. And we decided to do this. Uh, we first we we have a trading option and also we have a novel uh, rental option which uh, I believe like no other well-known platform actually offer this uh, thing at this moment and uh, we just uh, we pitched to uh, Black Hill Angel Fund and uh, now we're in the uh, due diligence process. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Tyler. Hey everyone, I'm Tyler with The Journeyman. Brendan Holloway, my business partner, and I are actually from Rapid City. Uh, over the last 10 wildfire seasons, Brendan and I have been both employees and uh, owners of a successful business in the wildland fire industry. Um, this is a very fast-paced, exciting, and lucrative industry, and since we've operated on both sides of employees and being an employer, we've noticed a lot of problems that we think our software can solve. One of the main problems is employees are usually only aligned with one or two companies, and there's no real way for them to highlight themselves, their experiences, and their qualifications. And then business owners like myself, we don't have access to this huge pool of employees. So over the last couple of years, we've had to turn down literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in potential contracts simply because the government will call me and say, hey, Tyler, can you send two paramedics to this far corner of Oregon? And by the way, you know, they need to be there in 14 hours. So it doesn't take very long for companies like ours, for our rosters, to get exhausted, and, or we don't have someone who's close enough. So with this, we hope to have a large database of qualified candidates that businesses like ourselves can pull from and hire on this short notice basis. There's a few other problems we're going to solve, but if you catch us at the social hour, we'll talk all about them. Thank you, Tyler. Yeah. T Tyler and Brennan created a, a massive confusion because we're Wildfire Labs investing in a product that's fighting wildfires. So it's a great business. So we're excited to partner with you. So go ahead, Jared. Hi, everyone. My name is Jared Tiefenthaler. I am the founder of Signed Up Sports. I'm a former collegiate athlete and spent a lot of time uh, in, during my summers volunteering hours helping young kids that used to come to the sports camps and whatnot. And when I was approached by my alma mater, um, with a problem they had in regards to the signing up process for their college basketball camps that they were putting on or their college football camps and how difficult it was to get the correct information to the parents who were sending their kids to these schools. It, you know, it didn't sit well with me. And so we created Signed Up Sports where it is our mission to sign up athletes, to manage camps, and to then grow the camps of these, of these universities or really small coaches out there. Um, you know, we found out that these camps are very vital to universities as, as revenue generating income. You know, they, they need these camps to pay for a, an assistant coach or to pay for a bus trip or whatnot. And they're being underserved with what's out there. And a lot of these schools, you know, don't have the big budgets to afford to do so. And so that's our mission is to really treat it like it's it, a specific business and give the, um, the value that they need behind that. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Um, you guys are brave doing pitches. This is great. Um, so the next question I have for you is where are you at in the wildfire process and where do you spend the majority of our, your time on? And I'm going to let you lead off with that, Tyler, um, with where you're at today. Right now we're in the customer discovery phase. We've interviewed and surveyed a whole lot of employees. That's half of this. And now we're more focusing on the businesses. We have a bunch in our personal network that we can reach out to. And so far it's being received well. And then defining our MVP, there's a million problems we want to solve, but just like filtering it down to like the core to start with. Thank you. These guys have been doing a great job. At, they did a survey and we had 200 and something responses. It may have been more than that at the end, uh, yeah, people like that have this problem. Hours. So it's just something, you know, from our standpoint, we just like to see that it's a painful problem that a lot of people have it. So uh, Kathy, do you want to go next? Okay. Uh, where I am right now, I'm in the process of finalizing my wireframes, prepping for app development. And with finalizing the wireframes, why that is so important is that you want to make sure, well, I want to make sure anyway, that Hire Cleaners app is as seamless and as easy to use for both the property partners 
and as well as the cleaners, because um, that's how you get your adoption. Uh, but doing the wireframe, uh, one thing too, I also would like to encourage future entrepreneurs, or if you're an entrepreneur right now, and you're looking to have an app for your business, you don't have to just focus on your, like your full-fledged app. A wireframe that is clickable will do just fine for your MVP to get started, to show someone, especially your customers, to show them like, hey, let me show you what I have. And then that way you can get feedback right as you start in your development because they can see it. And it's better to see something interactive to where they can actually click than just giving them a document. So, um, yeah. And oh, and I have reached a uh, big milestone for Haya. I had my first development meeting like two weeks ago. Yeah, rocking it. Congratulations. All right, uh, you want to go next, Jared, and talk a little bit where you're at? So, Sign Up Sports, we are at the go-to-market strategy. Um, we are, we're currently looking for clients right now and have an active sales funnel and, and have been doing that mainly as well as we're getting ready to raise some capital. And Mycroft. Uh, so, V Melendez, at this moment, we are, in, uh, we are about to start the uh, due diligence uh, process with uh, Black Hills Angel Fund. And uh, at the same time, we're also doing our uh, go-to-market testing. But uh, since we are in different industries, so our uh, go-to-market test is a little bit different. So since we're an app and we just want uh, as many people to download our app as possible, and uh, we are actually uh, using like 500 to 1,000 bucks on uh, Google Ads, and we're, we have tried over 200 different keywords, and we're trying to find out like uh, what keywords actually work, and what keywords are like the keywords we're not gonna use in the future. Uh, and then we are going to put like the rest of them, like our uh, advertising budget into those key keywords that would work. Yeah. So, yeah, so one of the things just out of those two things is that when you launch something, the temptation is to try to wait till everything is done and polished and everything else before you test. And we encourage entrepreneurs, and if you are thinking of starting a business, find a way to test your assumptions early. You are much more credible to an investor. I think I heard it a couple times, don't make up numbers. Find out what those metrics are, test them, and then come with credibility. Because when you come with credibility, the actual uh, gathered numbers, it helps you to build a case for what your revenue model will be. And then you're not just going 10 million in three years because that's not credible. So uh, you guys all come to Wildfire from different places. I thought it'd be interesting to cover that uh, a little bit about why you decided to build an app and where you started in that uh, journey. So Tyler, I'd like to start with you. You have a, I wanna just have, have you just mention your existing business and then why you decided to do Journeyman. Yeah, our current business is called Minuteman EMS. It's an emergency medical services company and we provide ambulances, paramedics, rope rescue teams to wildland fires. Brennan and I were both on one up until Sunday, just got home. Um, it really came down to solving our own problems. Like I said, we've turned down a lot of work and a lot of revenue simply because we didn't have some a qualified somebody close enough or, you know, we've had a roster of over 100 people, but it's amazing how we get two weeks into the fire season and all of a sudden everyone's gone, everyone's working for someone else. Every, it, it goes quick, so we just wanted to solve some of our own problems, and then the problems we faced as employees, and we know that our employees are currently facing. It's awesome. It's great to see you experiencing that pain personally, um, solving a problem you have. So Kathy, you're from Tulsa, and you're here with us today. And we're excited about that. Tell me about your journey here and what brought you here today. Well, I moved here from Tulsa mainly because I had gotten to a point to where I wanted to place all bets, all bets on myself. And sometimes, you know, to do great things, you have to move outside your comfort zone. So with Tulsa being home, I was very comfortable. And once I was introduced to the opportunity to join Wildfire Labs, um, and, and not just joining Wildfire Labs, but I had started to do my research on Rapid City, because I've never been here before. And as I started to learn about the tourism, especially like in the Black Hills, uh, I quickly learned that 
it aligned with my target customers, you know, being Airbnb hosts and property management companies and realtors. And I said, so why not take a chance to get uncomfortable so that way I have also a chance to go deeper into what I already started with customer discovery in Tulsa and to extend that here. And so really, I just took a chance, but definitely uh, I'm glad to be here. Great, thank you. Um, so Mycroft, you are from Minneapolis, so you're also not from here, and you also are a technical founder. And so you were building, as we talked about before, you're not building a product, you're building a business. So talk to me a little bit about that journey that you've gone on uh, in, in building a business. Yeah, so uh, personally, I believe uh, in terms of like starting a business, uh, like my my experience not only in school but also like the work that I had done previously actually helped me a lot. So uh, first like in school I actually I worked as the uh, research assistant in a uh, network, uh, computer network lab. I'm the only, I, I, I'm sorry, I was the only undergrad student and uh, we also published like, uh, like the first uh, paper that studies uh, commercial 5G. And uh, also in terms of work, so I have like two internship experiences. Uh, the first like internship is, you know, technically it's, it's not an internship. It's just like, uh, so my dad said, well, you know what, uh, it's, 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 it's summer vacation, you, you have to work. So he just hired me in his company. And, <laughs> and so uh, I was there for like uh, five weeks. Uh, in each week, he assigned a different guy just to sitting right next to me to teach me stuff. But that's actually really useful because um, so in that five weeks, first week was database, second week was uh, back end, third week was like uh, the front end, like the, the web, uh, fifth, uh, fourth week, Android, fifth week, iOS. So after that five week, I know exactly like how to apply the code that I learned from school into industry. And after that, I start like each time when I start to think about like new things, uh, I'm sorry, like learn you know, new things, I will think about how to apply this into the industry. And also I work uh, in Volvo Cars. Uh, in Volvo Cars, I work as the uh, uh, kind of like, like a compliance job. But the good thing is that like all the uh, uh, software development has to go through us. So I know exactly like what is going on in this company. And so I will learn how to run a company, like what departments should get involved if you would like to develop some, something. And most importantly is that the sequence of different departments that's, uh, that are getting involved. So I think I'm good at that, but I'm not super sure about how to start a business, especially like in another country here. So that's why I found Waf, uh, Wafar Labs, and they're really good at that. They uh, guided me like in a lot of things that I have no idea about in business. But uh, in terms of like the, the uh, technical side, I think I am doing pretty well up to now, yeah, so. <laughs> Yeah, le learning both of those sides has been important for you to be able to balance the technical knowledge with what you need to do to go to market. So that's been fun to work together on that. So Jared, you are a, f a fellow serial entrepreneur. So you, you, you seem to have also caught the virus. So tell me about that and your journey just in a nutshell of where you started to some of what you've learned uh, in your most recent work. So I was brought back to the Black Hills. I went to to Black Hill State and graduated from Arizona, moved back there, but was fortunate enough to come back and start a baseball training mobile app company that I have and um, got to work with the Black Hills Angels Fund and I'm forever grateful for them and the opportunity that they gave me. And with that, you know, did some marketing and stuff and was able to start a social media marketing business in the Black Hills here. And, you know, that was just built upon the fact that we knew how to do social media for our, our baseball company and then moved back here and, you know, found the need with the business owners and the community here that that, that was prevalent. And when I was approached by Black Hill State um, for this software idea that they needed and wanting to grow their camps and whatnot, it kind of meld both my previous, you know, businesses, being the, the software side on the baseball app and then the marketing side of what we do now. And so, um, you know, I, I know Todd Gagney really well. I wish he could be here today, but that's okay. And so, with this idea, you know, I, I had some mentors to basically go back on and say, you know, is this even going to be possible? And then he connected me with Wildfire Labs and with Mike and whatnot. And it's um, the only reason we're able to do it, glory to God first, but with, uh, with you guys and, you know, being the mentors for us and whatnot. And 
um, being able to lean on you when I need to lean on you. And it's been, it's been awesome being able to work with Wildfire Labs and really just the Black Hills community. Well, thanks. Um, so last question I want to hit, I think we have a couple more minutes here uh, before we go today, is uh, just a little bit about for you as an entrepreneur, the, the journey you've gone on, um, what would you tell your audience about this audience of entrepreneurs especially about advice that you have? Um, I know you're all at different stages in the process and at different you know, sequences. Some of you already launched apps before. Some of you, this is your first one. But just something to share the audience as a, as a learning that you've had uh, thus far in your journey. So um, do you want to go again and, and wrap up? Yeah, so the first thing that came to my mind was being coachable, but we've heard that all day long, so I won't say that. But, you know, I think what's helped me the most is creating opportunity. And when I say creating opportunity, I mean coming to events like this, putting yourself out there, networking, uh, you know, trying to find people that can complement you on your business skills. And, you know, first you might need to, to know what those are yourself. You know, we, we talked about that a lot in college, I remember, um, you know, finding your own value. And so early on, I, I like to think I found what I was good at in the business world and uh, quickly learned what I'm not so good at and, and, you know, what the type of people I need to be around to help maximize myself and, and what I got going on. And then, you know, that all leads into having a good team around you and whatnot. But I, I, I truly think networking first was the first steps in finding those types of people for me. And so everybody here doing that, I think, um, you know, you're, you're at least on the right track. And, you know, you got to be vulnerable. You got to go shake the hand of that person that, you know, you want to talk to. So take those chances, I'd say, and create your own opportunity. Great. Right. Thank you. Tyler. Uh, this one's easy for me. Everything takes longer, costs more, and just has way more steps than I initially ever forecasted. Yes, we heard that loud and clear, and hearing that from Deb. I mean, you hear that everywhere. I mean, I look at my journey too, and it, it always seems really simple until you get down in, into it, and then you realize how many things go wrong. And one of the things that we see as a clear, and one of the things we actually rate when we, before we take an entrepreneur in, is do they have grit? Are they willing to go through the barriers that it takes to go from taking an idea to ultimately what scales? And so I think that's just a really important point. So go ahead, Mycroft. Uh, in terms of starting a company, uh, that's pretty different from, uh, you know, just studying things from, uh, like, in school, I would say. Yeah. So uh, the most important thing would be uh, to execute the right thing. And uh, my words would be that first rigidify, then optimize, finally solidify. So first, like, uh, rigidify means that you have to, for example, learn some kind of, like, management, either, like, management um, ways or, like, uh, the way to, uh, run, to, to run a team. You don't need to ask if, for example, I have to follow I exactly what, for example, like, Google is doing or what Apple is doing. You just pick one. You just pick one way and then just follow it. Don't ask any question at all. Just do it. Then, after a while, you can say, okay, I, this has already be, uh, already becoming like a habit. So probably after a year, you can say, okay, we, we can like tune it a little bit, like to optimize a little bit, to make sure like this, this plan of, you know, like running a team is more, you know, uh, fits to us. So, and then you solidify this, which this becomes your culture of how to like run a team, how to like build a product in uh, your company. That's, that's how I uh, tell like my co-founder and uh, other people in my company. Thank you, Minecraft. Kathy. I would say my answer is threefold wrapped up into one. The first is if you're, well, learning that if you're right, if you're not right, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It could mean that it's just not right now. And I believe it was Nick that mentioned earlier about, you know, we as entrepreneurs, how our businesses and our ideas are like our babies. Well, trusting, having enough trust to those who you're surrounded with to let go, let, let go of the strings somewhat to where you can really hear what they're saying and how, you know, they're coaching you and they're leading you to where you receive it because those who are surrounded around you, especially being in community, because success is not found in silos, it's, it's in community. So those who are you're surrounded with, they're really looking out for 
you, your business, because they want your business to grow, especially if they're tied to your business. They want you to grow, so they're not just telling you something. And then lastly, I would say um, celebrate the small wins. A lot of times as entrepreneurs, too, we can get so busy in doing the work of entrepreneurship. We don't, we don't pause and celebrate the small wins. Or we don't pause for self-care. or We don't pause just to take in the community like me coming from Tulsa and being here. You know, I started taking da uh, daily walks in the morning just to walk around and see what's around. Like, oh, okay. Then I would take a picture of the shop. Maybe I'll come back and, and visit some other time. But just immersing myself in the community and learning, this is the last thing, learning that right here in Rapid City, the entrepreneur ecosystem, I don't know if you all know how powerful and what you really have, because coming from Tulsa, and we have a, a major tech hub now, but what I've witnessed here, I thought when I came here, I was just getting wildfire lap and all those inside wildfire labs. And trust me, the support, the guidance uh, I received, everyone connected with wildfire. It's, it's unmatched, period. It's unmatched. But then, when I stepped outside of wildfire and they introduced me to Elevate Rapid City, and I met Dylan and Hannah, to where I have a place outside of uh, wildfire to go to uh, for my next steps. Um, also, from the Elevate Rapid City, and just even today, meeting Donna with SB, 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 SB something or other. SB, you know, <laughs> the Small Business Center. Well, meeting her even, you all are really connected to where you have something great. Uh, just let other people know, because I talk about you all the time when I talk to my family and friends, but I can see it really growing and taking off to where you can attract top entrepreneurs around the country and even like outside of the country, uh, just what you have. And I just encourage you, you to continue. Thank you guys. Give them a round of applause. So thank you everyone for joining us. That's all we have planned. I just wanna say one thing in closing. We have a pretty amazing foundation for something. And that's why I'm doing this. But there's a lot that we have left to do. And if we keep on this track, I think we could do something that really makes an impact on South Dakota. And I'm just privileged to do it with all of you. So thank you for this time. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. I think there's a lot of good nuggets in this one that were uh, certainly things you can apply. If you're interested in have a software business idea and looking for an acceler, drop us a line at info at wildfirelabs.io. Thank you.